Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. <clears throat> At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This end is the scripture reading for today. So welcome to our first Sunday in Lent. Uh, and when I say that word, it probably sounds interchangeable with Lent. Lent and Lent, I say them the same way, as just like I say pen and pen the same way. Carlin always makes fun of me for that. Um, so for me, a writing pen is a pen, and a pen you stick in something is a pen. Um, just the way that I speak, unfortunately, I guess. So the first Sunday in Lent, and it, I want to say it was wonderful to see so many people here for Ash Wednesday this past week. And I just want to take a brief moment uh, to discuss the sermon from Ash Wednesday because it's going to set us up for our sermon series throughout uh, Lent. So uh, for those of you that weren't able to make it that evening, um, I had asked everyone to view this season, these 40 days, as if we were preparing to live our last 40 days. But this is not a doomsday prophecy. I'm not here to tell you the world is going to end in 40 days. Um, I'll remind you that we are all told that that will come as a thief in the night, and only the Father knows that time. But what I do want you to take away is in the next 40 days, live them as if you're going to meet God at the end of those 40 days. And I bring that up because, again, it'll be the basis for our series over the next month. So with that in mind, as we move forward into our Lenten season, let us start today with our discussion on what it means to be in the wilderness. So our scripture for today, we find the account of Jesus' baptism and the time that he spends in the wilderness and then John's arrest in these short, uh, I believe, seven uh, odd verses for today. And this year, if you happen to be following along in the lectionary, which I know that you guys all do diligently, seeing where we are in the lectionary each, each and every week, we are in what the, we refer to as year B in the lectionary. There is year A, B, and C. We are in year B. And so in year B, we focus upon the writing of the book of Mark during this time of year. And if you are a person that likes the Cliff Notes versions of things, uh, if you're a person that likes action-packed stuff that moves quickly, then Mark is the perfect book for you. If you're a person that likes great detail and really getting into the nitty-gritty of what's going on when you read and study, then you're probably much better served looking at Matthew, John, or Luke. Uh, so this year, as I said, we are exploring the book of Mark during this time. And the scripture for today, you no doubt notice, Mark moves very quickly uh, through the story of Jesus in the wilderness. Uh, he doesn't spend time talking about how Jesus was tempted by Satan. He simply tells you that Jesus was tempted by Satan. You don't get the account of being taken up high on the city to look all around and Satan saying, I'll give this all to you if you simply bow down to me. That is not what Mark is going to focus on. He'll just tell you what happened and then move forward. But when we think about being in the wilderness, what is it that comes to mind for you? Now, those of us that have lived our lives in an area like this, when we think of the wilderness, we think of something like a jungle, right? Or a forest that's never been explored or a deserted island. Uh, maybe you think about being somewhere up in the mountains in a place where no one's been for a long time. Where there's an old abandoned remote cabin. There's no cell service or any way for anyone to reach you other than to actually seek you out. 
That is what we tend to think about when we think of the wilderness, a truly remote place where you can be all alone. But what's interesting about the wilderness or the thought of the wilderness is if you had spent your entire life in a place like New York City and you come to this place, you would look around and say, wow, look at me, I'm in the wilderness, right? See, it's all a matter of perspective when it comes to the wilderness or what you consider to be the wilderness. Now, the thing about the figurative wilderness is that it looks different for everyone. Now, I have told you all before uh, that I believe myself to be a very naturally introverted person. Um, it's funny, when I say that to people, they almost always laugh at me, like, you're an introverted person? Well, yes, I, I am. I, at least they think I am. Uh, and I know it's an odd choice for a pastor uh, to be an introvert, but if God can call Moses to lead the Israelites despite his struggles with speech, then he can call an introverted person to pastor a church. So yes, I do tend to think of myself as more of an introvert than extrovert. Uh, and for me, the wilderness, what most people consider it to be, the quiet of the forest, the places where I am actually alone, they do not make me feel alone. They fill my soul. The wilderness for me is a place with lots of people, a place with lots of noise, with so much going on that I can't focus on anything for too long. So while someone from New York City might view this place as the wilderness, for me, New York City is the wilderness. I feel more alone and withdrawn when I'm surrounded by all that going on than I do when I'm actually all alone. See, we all have those places where we feel more comfortable than others. But the problems that can arise in our lives is when the choices that we make lead us to a path that makes us feel as if we are all alone. Now, we might actually not be physically alone, but we feel alone. We can feel like we are all alone in that wilderness. We can feel as if we are struggling because of that. And we feel like there is no one that could possibly be there to help us or would even want to be there to help us. Now, brothers and sisters, it is entirely possible that you are sitting here this morning surrounded by your other brothers and sisters in Christ, and you feel as if you are living your life alone in the wilderness. Perhaps you are struggling with an addiction, and the effort you have made to hide it from everyone has left you feeling like you are alone. Maybe you are dealing with issues in your family, and you find yourself feeling isolated because of them. Maybe you've spent so much time being focused on your job, and trying to get ahead in it, that it's led you to a place where the other aspects that you've neglected have made you feel alone. See, we all have things that we struggle with, right, church? And I think just being able to admit that to one another is a step in the right direction. Being willing to say, you know what? I'm not doing great. Or, you know what? Things are a little rough right now. It helps us to start to reach out so that we do not feel so alone. Now, one thing that I have tried to change recently in my life, and it's actually part of what I am trying to do during Lent, is this. In my life, I have stopped answering a common question with the common answer. Now, the common question is, hey, how are you? Right? Do that all the time. Hi, how are you doing? What's the, re what's the uh, correct response? I'm doing okay, right? That's the correct response. I have tried or am trying to stop doing that. If someone asks me how I am doing, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them how I'm doing. I'm going to be honest with them. If I'm not doing okay, then I'm just going to say, not doing real well. And I know that for some people, you might think, well, that's going to make others feel uncomfortable. And you might think, well, pe well, pastor, won't people stop asking you? Yeah, they will. Some people will stop asking me how I'm doing if I'm honest with them and with my response. But the thing of it is, the people that will stop asking didn't care to hear my response in the first place, right? 
And the people that actually care are going to keep asking. And they're going to keep asking. And they're going to keep checking. And they're going to make sure that they're there to help you. And that is what I believe that we are all called to do for one another as a community of faith. We are called to be a people that care for one another. People that want to help others feel as if they are not alone in the wilderness. Now, I believe that because that is what Jesus does for us. In those times when we feel as if we're all alone, we need to know that we are not. Jesus walks with us through the wilderness of our lives, whatever it might look like for us. I believe we're called to do the same thing for others because we are supposed to follow the example that he has given to us. And when we talk about our scripture for today, when we describe it, we almost always describe it as the story of Jesus being alone in the wilderness, right? Those words, Jesus alone in the wilderness. But was he alone? Well, the answer is no, he was not alone in the wilderness. Besides the wild beasts that we get referenced today in Mark, which all Mark says is there were wild beasts. We don't get, were the wild beasts there to torment him? Was Jesus like throwing a ball to the wolves? We don't know. Mark doesn't tell us. Uh, but besides them, there were two other entities that were there with him, right? There was Satan and there were angels that were with him in the, in the wilderness. Now, Satan was there to tempt him to try and dissuade him from following the plan that the Father had for him. And the angels were there to tend to him, to help him in that time. But brothers and sisters, don't we find the same when we feel as if we are alone in the wilderness? We feel as if we're all alone, but the truth is those two entities are there as well. You see... When we find ourselves in those moments that we are feeling alone, Satan is there to tempt us to move further away, to try and isolate us even more, to try to get us to listen to that voice that is telling us that no one cares. And the angels are there doing their best to pull us out of that wilderness and to let us know that we are not alone. So the question I have for you all today is this, which side are you going to be on for those that are facing the wilderness? Are you going to feed into letting them feel alone by ignoring them? Are you going to let them feel more isolated by blowing them off when they try to talk to you? Or are you going to help pull them out of the wilderness? Are you going to show them that they are not alone in this world? So in this Lenten season, I want you to commit yourself to helping others come out of the wilderness. Listen to them. Let them know that they are not alone. Now, if you feel as if you need to talk to someone more about this, give me a phone call. Or talk to someone here today, one of your brothers and sisters, and ask God to be with you. Because I believe that none of those that were listed will ever let you feel as if you were all alone. My challenge for you this week is this. Do your best to listen to people and see how you can help them come out of the wilderness. Amen.